Hello, soon to be licensed nurse practitioners, Miss Cohen here. And what I want to talk to you about today is how to get your very first nurse practitioner job as a new grad. There will be obstacles, but you'll be happy that we discuss this because it's more positive than not. But let me prepare you. And let me just tell you, me personally, I am known to be a go-getter, a hustler. And that's the mentality I want you to have as a new grad. So let's talk about it. How to get a nurse practitioner job as a new grad. It's not what you know, but it's who you know. We're going to talk about that. Show up with goodies. Uh, get your resume in order. Apply online. Become besties with a recruiter. Use a cover letter. Interview time. Follow up. And negotiating a salary. But let me just share with you my own personal experience. Um, and I think... This is going to be very meaningful to you, and I hope it works out, but let's go. So it's not what you know, it's who you know. I can't stress that enough. You may be working right now on the floor as a regular RN. You may be working at a coffee shop. I don't care, but you want to make sure you treat everybody with respect. Um, you'll never know when you'll need someone in the future. It may be an aide on the floor. Um, who may have a contact for you for a nurse practitioner position. It may be a customer of yours at the coffee shop who happens to be the CEO of some hospital. You'll never know. But whenever you do find out that that may be a potential connection for you, keep them in mind because you may need them in the future. Don't ever burn any bridges. So again, if you're working at a job right now on the floor, you hate it with your guts. You hate it. You can't get out of there fast enough. Be nice, be kind, be thankful, be presentable because they may be the ones offering you a position as a nurse practitioner. Even if you hate it for the first two years, I'll explore that a little bit more later. That's all you need to get started is that first two years. So do not burn bridges as much as you hate it. You may need that position. Now, you certainly want to use your past resources and that applies to teachers that you met in school preceptors that you use for your clinicals, nurses on the floor that you met, managers that you met during your rotations. So let me stop right now and I want to share with you a quick story, personal story of mine. When I was working as a regular uh, RN, actually prior to that, when I was a nursing student, an RN student, I didn't even have a nursing job then. I did one of my rotations in the oncology department. And I didn't love the job per se much, but I loved a nurse that worked there. I loved her attitude. I loved her desire to work there. I loved how she showed up every morning with a smile on her face, wanting to work there. I loved her interaction with the students. I loved her schedule. I loved, loved her hours. And I said to myself, that's who I want to be when I become a nurse on the floor. So after I finished school and I finished the rotation, I wrote them a thank you letter, not only to the manager on that floor, letting them know I really like this position and I love, would love to work there, but also to that nurse. And I told her, I loved who you are as a nurse and I want to be you in your position when I become a floor nurse. Okay, they said, oh, you're so cute, whatever. Uh, sorry, we don't have any positions. And besides, you need to have experience. So bye. So I was very sad, whatever, walked away. And a year and eight months later, that nurse kept my thank you note because she thought I was so cute that I wrote one to her. And in that time, that facility was looking for a floor nurse and they couldn't hire anyone. So that nurse came up to the manager and said, hey, you remember that cute girl that wanted to work here? You know, the Spanish girl with the accent. How about her? Guess what? They reached out to me and they offered me a job to say, hey, would you happen to be still interested? And I was like, hell yeah. And that's how I got that job. So we'll talk about writing that thank you note. We'll talk about using nurses that you worked for as preceptors or whatever. But that's a good example of how I shadowed someone and she was an excellent contact to get my first job. Even if it was a floor nurse, that could also apply for a nurse practitioner job. We'll talk more. Mm -hmm. So current or past jobs, you always want to say, please, thank you very much. Let them know that you are a... Um, either a student who's about to finish nurse practitioner job or that um, you are a new grad or whatever. Other NPs, talk to them. Let them know, hey, um, do you know any jobs available at your facility? If you're currently working with a preceptor, let, hey, ask, are there any jobs in your 
pos in your uh, position, in your place, in the hospital, who can I speak with? Say hi, introduce yourselves. And if you're currently a student, ask if they wouldn't mind being a reference in the future, not only for your applications, but also when, um, when they call, they call and they wanna find out more about you. Um, so definitely plant your seeds along the way. Show up with muffin, muffins, donuts, coffee, and a resume. And I say, this is very non-kosher. What do I mean by that? Nowadays, everybody wants you to apply online. They don't even wanna meet your face. But remember I told you I am a go-getter and a hustler? This may work, it may not work, but it worked for me. So let me tell you my story first. When I graduated as an RN and I got my NCLEX all done, um, it was very difficult to find a nursing job. So I printed out 20 resumes. I dressed up super cute and I showed up to my first five choices of places where I wanted to work around the area where I lived. One of them happened to be a community clinic. So I showed up. Hi, my name is Shira. I'm here to give my resume in case you guys are looking for a position. Um, is there any way I can speak to the manager? And I showed up with uh, muffins, I think it was that time. So they automatically were interested. The secretary at the front desk automatically giving her attention because you'd be surprised how far food will get you. And they were like, I'm so sorry. The manager is busy right now. She can't see you. She didn't even ask. Uh, but we can take your resume and let her know you stopped. I'll take the muffins too. And I was like, what? Okay. And I walked out. Um, I also happened to tell that lady, uh, I know this is a community clinic. Just please let her know that I am bilingual. And I walked away. As I was walking out, I get into my car. I get a phone call from the manager. She said, wait. I am so sorry that they didn't direct you to me. Um, I saw in that resume and you told her you were bilingual. We're actually looking. Are you interested to sit down for an interview? And I was like, that's what I'm here for. So extremely non-kosher. This may be applicable to smaller uh, places like a community clinic or just a smaller place where you can show up so they can see your face. First impression is huge. And if you show up, not only will they have a look at you, but they'll give you 30 seconds of attention, especially if you bring food, um, and say either yes, no, or maybe. But that's a great attention grabber. Again, very non-kosher, um, but it's worth doing it if you're really serious about this one place you really want to work at. So it shows immediate interest and availability. Um, this is your opportunity to meet the manager in 30 seconds, shake your hand, show your face, um, and it's your window to shine. 30 seconds, don't overwhelm them. Just say, hey, I'm just a new grad. I'm interested, I'm available to, uh, to start tomorrow. I am bilingual and, and this is a place that I would love to work at. Keep it simple, okay? All right, so get your resume in order. Certainly, um, you wanna do that even before you go to that place that you really wanna work at with the muffins, but introduce your skills list, uh, use action words. You wanna make sure you approve, read and make it relevant to that NP role. So you don't wanna say list every single, every single job you have worked at. But um, a good example would be, let's say I wanna talk about how I worked as the drive through girl at a donut place, which I did. And the reason why that was relevant is because my hours were very weird and so um, when I worked at a drive through uh, place for donuts, um, I had to start work at six o'clock in the morning and I was there on time. I didn't drive a car because I didn't have money for a car or anything, but that could be an example. It's, it's, it's stretching it, but you know, to say, hey, I work and it, the hours were weird in case you're applying for a job that has weird hours or requires you to start really early or work nights and talk about compliance and or how, um, not compliance, but rather punctuality, all right? And how you, um, regardless not having a car, you would show up on time or whatever. That's a good example. But for the most part, you want your experiences to stay relevant to the nurse practitioner role, whatever that may be. Now, there are applications you can play for, or people you can pay so they can make your resume outstanding and beautiful, whatever, that's up to you. But, um, Keep it simple. And there are free samples on Google. You can look into that. You definitely want to make sure you apply online, uh, set up a LinkedIn account. That's the world we live in today. So put yourself out there because not only will you be 
uh, applying through positions through LinkedIn, but also your application is out there in the world. So there will be recruiters who will be reaching out to you. And I'm going to talk about the importance of recruiters who may be offering you positions. Okay. So make sure um, to use names of people who are currently working in the facility in case you are applying online. Hey, I happen to know that one MA or that one NP who is your preceptor or that one manager, even if you said hello. Um, I happen to work uh, during a rotation in your facility and I worked under the supervision of blah, blah, blah. Using names will get you very far because they always give jobs anyways to people who are relevant, who are working in that setting already, or if there's some kind of connection, use names. So write down names as you are living your world, whatever, just keep names available. Become besties with a recruiter. Um, another great example. So look online. You may simply just look for recruiters, Google recruiters around my area and send your resumes. These people are paid by the facilities who are looking to hire. You do not pay recruiters. So they'll work for you for free. They have access to jobs all over. So even if you are, I don't know, maybe you're planning to move, they'll look for jobs and ask you, are you interested to work within a 10 mile radius, 30 mile radius, uh, out of state. Um, this is also good for traveling nurses. And my story with this is I came across this recruiter online and I introduced myself. I interviewed with him and he became extremely resourceful for me when I was looking to change jobs. Um, I was currently at a job as a um, nurse practitioner and I wasn't happy with the salary and I was looking to change jobs. But um, I actually, I was very happy working there. I just wasn't happy with the salary. And this is a tip for you. Again, this is kind of like non-kosher, but I'm telling you my experience. So good luck to you with that. I looked around um, and he said, listen, apply to this th different areas. you got one that it's in this case was Bridgeport. The other one was Greenwich. Now I'm in Connecticut. And the other one was in Stanford. Um, I went and I applied to all three. I interviewed with all three. All three gave me um, uh, and a salary range of how much they wanted to pay me. And I used that offer at my actual job. And I said, listen, I just want you to know I love this job very much and I don't want to go anywhere. But look how much this pay people are offering me. I was reached out and they're saying they're desperate. They want to pay this much. Would you be willing to match that? And um, they matched it. So again, it's not very nice of you to go around and start negotiating prices, but that's how that recruiter became very important at that one time period, that period of time in my life. And I ended up getting paid more money. But as a new grad, you can't really negotiate salaries. And I'll talk more about that. But for you who are, who's looking for a nurse practitioner job, get yourself, get your hands on a recruiter, introduce yourself and have them work for you. Now, you say cover letter for each place you're applying for, and that goes with your resume. Why? Because you want to introduce yourself. This is your window to introduce yourself, say why you want to work there. Um, and it's, it's the first thing that they're going to read before they even get to your resume. So tell them why you want to work in that facility specifically. Let's say it's oncology and you love oncology because there's a personal story. Maybe your family member died of cancer and you want to make yourself available to people who are in needs or I don't know but if there's a reason why you want to work at that facility let's say it's right next to your house and commuting it's very easy and you've heard how wonderful the facility is you may need to actually do some investigation about that facility and and fluff it up a little bit for example say I know this facility it's I don't even know the terminology that they use but it's copy certified and to me that's very important or um, the reviews of this facility are outstanding. For that reason, I would like to become part of such a shining, I don't know, institution, whatever. But let them know specifically to that place. Don't just print 20 cover letters and be the same for everybody. No, make it specific to that place. Do the extra homework. Okay. And then tell them um, that you live close if that's the case so that they'll know that if it snows, you're going to be available. And again, do your homework about that facility. Let them know why you're interested in them and why you would be an asset to them. Interview time, right? If you do get that interview, make sure you're prepared. That's the best way to reduce anxiety for anything, even for sitting down for the boards. You want to make sure you're very, very well prepared. 
um, pretend that you're talking to the interviewer, talk to a friend about it, have them interview you, whatever may be the case. At the end of the interview, certainly you want to express your appreciation for their time and to let them that you are still interested. Um, highlight one or two reasons why you would be an ideal for that position. Write that thank you note for each interviewer at the end. Um, you want to do this about two days after your interview and certainly walk out knowing when should you hear back from them. Ask, when, would, when should I expect to hear back from you, either yes or no? And if they say two weeks, at two weeks, you're going to follow up and say, hey, um, last time we spoke, you said you would follow up at two weeks. It's that time. I want you to know I'm still interested. Uh, please let me know if I'm still a candidate, blah, blah, blah. Um, and this is what I just said. So make sure you tell them right before you exit interview, when would you hear back from them? And then follow up at that time in, in case you're still interested. Negotiating salary. Not an option as a new grad, a nurse practitioner. Nowadays, they don't really care about your skills, roughly. They do not care about your skills. All they care about is your years of experience as a nurse practitioner. And yours is zero, niente, nada. For that reason, you're just going to have to say thank you very much and take the position at whatever it may be. All right, as a new grad, there's no negotiation. After two years, though. Remember I told you the story about how I went and I looked for other jobs after two years? I uh, had my experience and now the numbers are different and now you can play with negotiating. So after two years, now you can go fish around and come back and say, hey, listen, this facility is offering me this much. Would you be willing to match it? If not, then if you're willing to go to the new job, whatever it may be. If you sign a contract, um, you can't leave early. You're stuck with them, okay? Um, and my biggest recommendation is when you get a job, don't let that fat bonus wow you because that expires. So if they say $10,000 bonus, $20,000 bonus, great. But if your earning salary, let's say they start you at, just to give you a, a ball number, 100,000 and they give you a $10,000 bonus and you're like, well, yes, of course, I want my hands on that $10,000. After five years, they may not even increase your, salary and if they do it maybe by a dollar so you're better off taking a higher salary say instead of a hundred take the one that it's offering you at 103 with no bonus because long term you will be making more money than getting that bonus at the beginning does that make sense and i hope it does but that's that's another biggie guys this is my best recommendation to you i hope this is helpful um again my ways of getting things done is is from my hustler experience um my go-getter experience at the end of the day it's it is a um a battle between other new grads out there so go out there and shine make yourselves known leave a good impression wherever you are this applies to everything in life not just as your nurse practitioner um interest or job um because you'll never know who can help you in the future? Always say please and thank you. And you'll be surprised um, how far that'll get you. I hope my experiences help you as, um, as you go out there and venture in your new nurse practitioner role. And uh, I wish you the best of luck. And thank you again for choosing the Cohen Review to assist you with not only now your studying journey, but also um, your path into becoming this nurse practitioner. And I hope very well-paying nurse practitioner. Best of luck, guys. Thank you.